Hello, in this video we're going to be doing an example problem that deals with a couple topics in control systems engineering, those topics being Routh Horwitz criterion and block diagram reduction. So given this block diagram right here, we are having a controller of K, a couple plants of different transfer functions, and our goal is to find the range of K for stability of this. So immediately, what do you need to know? You want to find the full closed loop transfer function of y of s over r of s. And then if we can find that denominator, we can use Routh Horwitz criterion to determine that range of stability for k. So we want an input of k so that this is a stable system. But first we need to find we need to reduce our block diagram so we can find that transfer function. So first thing we can do here is, so for block diagram reduction, if you have two blocks that are connected to each other with no loop, no feedback loop, we can just multiply them together. So two times two is four. So we got two over S, S plus four times two is four over S, S plus four. Now, looking at this, I forgot to close that, sorry. Next thing we need to do is close this negative feedback loop. So to do that, we take what the information that's in this, and, we can, and then, so we can pretend there's a block of one, this is called unity feedback, there's just a value of one there. So we do six over s plus three, and then all that divided by one plus this part times this part. So both of these have unity feedback, so it's a value of one, so it's one times six over s plus three, and we're just left with this. Then we can reduce that by multiplying this, by multiplying six over s plus three. So we can reduce this block right here to this, because we divide everything so we move this s, s plus three to the denominator so that one times this is just this and then, let's just kind of write this out more explicitly. So we multiply this through, so this just moves here and then that becomes that and then these two cancel out. And we're just left with this. And we can put that back in our block diagram induction and now we have another example where we can just multiply everything together. I did the math here, multiplying these two together, you get 24 over all of this. And then multiply by the K again, that gives us this 24K over our denominator. And then we have a negative feedback loop here. So we need to go through that. And then just like how we did over here, if we have a unity feedback, and then that reduces to this block right here. And I use the same exact method as I did here to reduce this for a unity feedback for negative feedback loop. And I get this. So now this is our final transfer function. Okay, and to determine if it's stable or for what value of k that this is stable, we just need to look at that denominator. So we just want to look at this and use our Routh Horwitz table. So draw that out. If you want to find out more about the Routh Horwitz criterion table, you can look up a separate video on that. But I just did the math here. The way you break it down is you have your, your order of polynomial then do every other value. So this is s to the, because our thing is s to the fourth, 18s squared plus 24k. Do the math. So you multiply this times this minus, minus that. And you're just left with, left with this, which reduces to that. And then you do seven times 24 minus zero and divided by seven. Again, if you want to see how to do these Ralph Horwitz in more detail, look that up. 
Then if you reduce everything, you are left with this from right here. And we want to look at everything in this first column here. So with this last row, we have 24K. So 24K needs to be greater than zero, which means K needs to be greater than zero, because if K is anything not greater than zero, if it's negative, and that this is negative, that means we're guaranteed to have a sign change, and we don't want that. Okay, so we know at least K is, needs to be greater than zero. But now let's look at this other criteria here. 24 minus 11.5K, that also needs to be greater than zero. And then if you do the math on that, K needs to be less than 2.09. So if k is greater than 2.09, you can obviously see that if you plug a k greater than here, that goes to negative, system is unstable. So ultimately, k needs to be greater than zero, and k needs to be less than 2.09. Needs to solve both of those criteria. You can write this as zero, k less than. So, I checked. So if k equals negative 1, you have this as your polynomial, and then these are your roots. And what do we have? We have a positive root. We don't want that. Because if we have a, if we're in the s-plane, if you have a root on the positive real axis, or on the positive right half plane, you know that that system is unstable. Now we have k equals 1. So this, we know from our calculations that this should be stable. Plug this in, we get two negative roots. That's good. They're imaginary, but that's okay. Then we look at k equals three. So this should be unstable. What do we have? We have a positive root. Therefore, that is unstable. This is stable because it has only negative roots. And then, then again, this is unstable because it has a positive root. So this was just one quick example problem that uses block diagram reduction and Ross Horowitz to determine the stability of this um, for determining a value of K for this control system.